Irina Sendler was a Polish social worker who helped Jewish people in the Warsaw Ghetto during World War II. As conditions in the ghetto got worse, Irina knew she had to do more for the people forced to live there. Others may look away or be afraid to get involved, but I was raised to not look away. Irina, who was born in Warsaw, Poland in 1910, learned compassion from her father. He was a doctor, and he treated Jewish patients when other doctors wouldn't. Irina, if you see someone drowning, you jump in to save them. It was a lesson she never forgot. I will help these families. When World War II started in 1939, Irina was alarmed. Adolf Hitler, the German dictator, wanted Poland and other European countries as part of his empire. And he wanted the people he called Aryans, who he believed were a master race, to be the only ones living in it. He had his soldiers, called Nazis, invade Poland and terrorize the Jewish people and others. Oh, no! Although Irina grew up Catholic, she had friends of different faiths and spoke Yiddish, a Jewish language. No! No, please, no! Irina had friends from school and work who felt the same way she did. Urka, Yanka, Yaga, and Yadwiga all shared Irina's desire to help people. They would fight the Nazis in Poland in their own way. We need to protect our Jewish friends and neighbors. Professor Redlinska taught us that a small group of people can change the world. In October 1940, the Nazis created a fenced-in neighborhood called a ghetto in a small section of Warsaw. The Nazis said that all Jewish people had to live in this one-mile area. The Warsaw Ghetto had few schools and shops. Guards decided who could come and go. You may pass. At first, Jews living in the ghetto could leave any time, as long as they were back before dark. But within a month, the ghetto was sealed, and residents were no longer allowed to leave without special permission. Get back inside! Hitler and his Nazis wanted the Jewish people to suffer. They made it difficult for them to have jobs. They made food and medicine very expensive. How will we get enough to eat? We will figure something out. The ghetto was crowded and dirty, and many people got sick. Irina's job as a social worker allowed her to pass through the gates. <coughs> I know my father would find a way to help these people. More than 450,000 Jews were forced to live in the ghetto. Grandparents, parents, and children shared beds. As many as nine people might live in one room. I'm so hungry. To survive, people traded what they had to get what they needed, like giving up a blanket for a loaf of bread. Thank you, my friend. Every week, the Nazis made new rules that made it harder for the Jews. Jewish people had to wear a Star of David to identify themselves. I can't go to the market. There's a 5 p.m. curfew now. I miss going to the park. The Nazi government had taken over the Polish government. Outside the ghetto, in what was called the Aryan section of Warsaw, lots of Polish citizens went along with the new rules. Most people stood by instead of helping, but not Irina. I don't think this is fair, but I'm scared to speak up. Fear makes you weak. Irina had an idea. She knew the German guards wouldn't want to catch the sickness that was spreading through the ghetto. The soldiers will let us into the ghetto as medical workers. We can sneak in extra medicine and food. We will have to be very careful. This is so dangerous. You may enter. Irina and her friends could only smuggle in a little at a time. This is all I have today. Inside the ghetto, they saw how bad it was. We must not give up. Outside the ghetto, things were getting worse. There were more restrictions for all the people of Warsaw, not just the ones who were Jewish. As the war continued... 
The Nazis made examples of people who broke the rules. If I interfere, I will be beaten or killed. Along with the food and medicine, Irina and Urka smuggled toys, games, and books into the ghetto. Thank you. Irina's mother sometimes sewed dolls to give to the children. Even during war, children need to play. I brought you something. As the war raged on, Irina's network of friends found homes for Jewish families to hide in outside the ghetto. And they started making fake registration papers with Polish names for the people in hiding. Families that hid Jews built secret hiding places. They were careful to make sure that their neighbors didn't know what they were doing. It is tiny, but the Nazis might not look for you here. Sometimes the families they hid were strangers. But sometimes they were friends, like Irina's boyfriend, Adam. Thank you, Irina, for helping my family. In 1941, word spread that the Nazis were going to force the Jews out of the ghetto and send them to the Treblinka concentration camp. Some people thought the concentration camps were work camps, but others realized that the Nazis were going to kill people there. Everyone, get on the train! Most of the adults in the ghetto thought they would die. They begged Irina to keep their children safe. Can you help our children? Irina knew some Catholic orphanages could safely find new families for the children, and the German soldiers wouldn't bother the nuns. Sister Maria might help us. Sister Maria, will you hide these children? We will. But the Nazis wouldn't let anyone take children out of the ghetto. I'll find a way to bring them to you. That's when Irina stopped thinking about sneaking supplies into the ghetto and started thinking about sneaking children out. I pray this works. This was even more dangerous than what Irina and her friends had been doing before. Now, the children were at risk, too. Shh, shh, little one. We must not get caught. In addition to using fake registration papers for the people they were helping, Irina's network also used fake names and papers to keep themselves and their friends and family safe. Guards will check our papers. Call me Yolanta. Irina and her network developed code words and phrases. Sister Maria... May I stop by today to drop off that coat I borrowed? Yes, Yolanta. It's getting cold out. Sometimes Urka and other people in the network help children escape by crawling through the sewer system underneath the gates. Yuck! It was disgusting, but leaving children behind in the ghetto would have been worse. Grab my hand, Peter. You made it! Irina knew it was important to wash off all evidence of the sewer so Nazis wouldn't suspect the children had escaped from the ghetto. But during the war, it was hard to find supplies like soap, so sometimes Irina had to ask neighbors for extra. I hope she doesn't turn me into the police. Let's get you into clean clothes. Once the children were bathed and wearing new clothes, Irina and her friends helped them to memorize their new names and details about their new families. And remember, you must never mention the ghetto. Isaac, you will be called Andre. Andrej. Irina earned the children's trust, though she couldn't risk telling them her real name. Read to me, Yolanta. If the children accidentally spoke in Yiddish in front of the Nazis, they would be caught. To stay safe, memorize these Catholic prayers. Repeat after me, quietly. Irina and her friends were part of the Polish underground resistance, called Zygoda. This group of Jewish people and allies worked against the Nazis throughout the war. By 1943, Zygoda had built a network of good Samaritans to help sneak the children into cars and buses to their new homes. Irina asked favors of anyone she thought she could trust. People helped find new homes for the children and gave food, clothes, and money. Here, 300 zwati. Thank you. We'll buy food with this. 
Irina had to be very secretive about accepting this help. Babies were hard to smuggle out because they cried. Irina tried different ways to get the babies to fall asleep. Don't worry, my sweetie. She hid one baby inside a suitcase on a streetcar. We'll get you out of here. And another in a sack of potatoes. One time she hid a napping baby at the bottom of a toolbox and then hid the toolbox in a truck. Sometimes it takes ten people to help save one child. There was a driver who taught his dog to bark to cover up the sound of crying children as he drove them through the ghetto gates to safety. Move along. Woof, woof. Good dog, we made it. Rescuing children was especially hard because everyone was sad and scared. Parents didn't want to give up their children. This is horrible, but if we give our baby to Yolanta, maybe we give her a future. Babies were less likely than older children to get caught outside the ghetto. They didn't need to learn new names, languages, or prayers. In April 1943, about 700 Jews who were still living in the ghetto decided to fight the Nazis rather than go to the concentration camps. Many died in the fight, but some of the Jews were able to escape. We won't go. The Jews fought for a whole month. This was called the Warsaw Ghetto Uprising. The Nazis eventually won and destroyed the ghetto. But the organized resistance inspired other people to fight back elsewhere. Meanwhile, Irina had made a promise to herself. Every night, no matter how tired she was, she wrote down the birth names of all the children she hid, along with their new names and addresses. These lists will help parents find their children when the war is over. This was another dangerous decision. If the Nazis found Irina's lists, they could hunt down the children and the people who had helped them. So Irina started writing in secret code. She hid the scraps of paper in her apartment. No one will understand this but me. She was doing all she could to help Jewish families and their children. And she put her own family at risk every time she rescued a child or asked a new family for help. Please be careful, Irina. Irina, Erka, Yaga, Yanka, Yadwiga, and the rest of the network helped the Jewish people of Warsaw for more than four years. We will protect him. No matter how scared Irina was, she kept helping. She kept asking for food, for money, for soap. We'll take whatever you can spare and for safe homes where the children could live. Meanwhile, the Nazis started searching apartments. Check in the closet. In October 1943, the Nazis found out what Irina was doing. They arrested her and put her in prison. I'll never tell you where the children are hidden. While well, Erka and Yaga kept working. The Nazis beat Irina badly. They wanted to make an example of her. But Jagota paid a bribe to a Nazi guard to let Irina escape. Get out of here! Run! Thank you for saving my life! After escaping prison, Irina had to be more careful about going out in public. Jagota obtained more fake papers for Irina. Yaga, Erka, and the others helped her hide until the end of the war. I can still help the children while I'm hiding. Just call me Clara now. Irina was scared about what would happen to the lists of names if she were caught again. So she and Yanka put the little pieces of paper in glass jars. Let's bury these jars under the apple tree in Yaga's yard. No one will look for them there. When Irina's mother died in 1944, Irina could not go to her funeral because the Nazis were looking for her there. I haven't seen her. But using the name Clara, she continued her work helping families survive. What else can I bring you? Sometimes she would sneak out to check on the Jewish family she helped hide, including her boyfriend. My dear Adam. Meanwhile, several countries, including the United States and the United Kingdom, 
sent in their armies to defeat Hitler's Nazis. At last, in September 1945, World War II was over. After the war ended, Irina and Yanka dug up the jars and began working to reunite the children with their birth families. The jars are still here! Sadly, most of the parents had not survived the war. But thanks to Irina, the children got to learn about their Jewish identities and their lives before Hitler came to power. In 1947, Irina married Adam, and she became a mother with a family of her own to care for. Oh, my little angel, I love you. For many, many years after the war, no one knew about Irina's work. The new communist government of Poland did not want people who were resistance workers during the war to become famous. We don't want ordinary citizens to think they can fight the government and win. People who fought the Nazis are enemies of communism. In 1965, Irina was named one of the righteous among the nations, an honor given by Israel to non-Jewish people who risked their lives to save Jews during the Holocaust. I wish our government would let me travel to Israel to accept the award in person. In 1983, after communism fell, people were free to talk about their acts of resistance during the war. Everyone began to learn about Irina's extraordinary efforts. Solidarity! And at last, Irina was free to go to Israel and accept her award. A tree grows in Jerusalem to honor her. In 2007, Irina was nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize. I'm not a hero. I didn't do anything out of the ordinary. I just followed my father's advice. Before she died at age 98, Irina met some of the children she had saved so many years before. Hello, Peter. I grew up to have my own children and grandchildren, all because of you, Irina. The End Margaret Lippmann is a writer whose ancestors came from Poland. She likes to tell stories of people who do things they never imagined they could. Margaret has written for the Jewish Telegraphic Agency, Preservation Magazine, Condé Nast Traveler, Moon Travel Guides, and other publications. She conducted oral histories of Holocaust survivors for the USC Shoah Foundation. Sarah Luna is an illustrator from California who makes art for children's and young adult books, games, and galleries. She enjoys painting in the quiet hours of the night, under the watchful eye of her cat, Fable. Sarah is thrilled to help tell the tale of such an inspiring woman 